I spoke about rewriting the code of life. So I talked about using CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing. We talked about a little bit about where the technology came from. It was a fundamental research project that uncovered the activity of a protein, CRISPR-Cas9, that can be used to cut genomes, cut DNA at precise positions that triggers gene editing. And this is a technology that's taken off over the last seven years around the world and is increasingly being used to uncover the functions of genes, but also to repair them. And I think in the future with cancer uh, applications, it's going to both help us understand the genetic basis for cancer and also uh, figure out ways to treat it using probably uh, gene editing in T cells to uh, target the immune system. The idea of CRISPR-Cas9 is that it's a system that grew out of a, an adaptive immune system in bacteria. So it's a way that bacteria can program proteins like Cas9 to recognize and cut DNA. So in bacteria, it works to destroy viral DNA. But in, in uh, mammalian cells and human cells, uh, it works as a technology for introducing changes into a genome at a targeted position. So you can imagine that if you have a tool that is effectively a scalpel for the genome, you have a way to make uh, cuts to DNA that can trigger targeted changes in one or multiple genes in ways that allow scientists to now investigate genetic function, but also to make corrective changes to genomes that could be very beneficial in clinical medicine. Well, I think as a therapy, when we think about it, especially for cancer therapy, I think about it in the context of, uh, of, of cancer uh, immunotherapy. I think it's a way to expand the utility of immunotherapy beyond the small collection of cancers where it's highly effective currently to potentially utility with uh, against solid tumors, uh, ways to program T cells so that they're more effective at recognizing uh, t uh, cancer cells and, and uh, getting into uh, solid tumors for effective mitigation there. Well, many. Uh, you know, it's a, anytime you're manipulating the genome, of course, you have to know what genes you're manipulating. And so the, one of the risks is just understanding uh, what you're doing in terms of the, you know, genetics of the cell. But I think beyond that, we also have to think about uh, both the um, challenge to delivery. So if any use of CRISPR-Cas9 is to be made in patients, in where you're injecting or introducing these molecules into the body, then we have to think hard about you know, how to get these molecules into the right tissue type and how to avoid undesired, unintended uh, changes to the genome. And then there's also the, uh, the whole area of ethics and thinking about how to control the use of a technology that's now widely available globally and can be useful both for the kind of editing that we're talking about here, but also has been used in the human germline to make uh, heritable changes. It's the same technology, so we need to think hard about how we regulate a tool like this. Well, you know, this is the amazing thing about the CRISPR-Cas9 technology. It's actually uh, one of the reasons it's taken off as a tool is that it's not expensive at least in principle, to use it and to get a, a access to it. So I think the cost comes in when we think about all, all of the other accessory technologies that are necessary, especially for clinical medicine. If we have to have particular types of cells, if those cells are difficult to cultivate, um, and then thinking about personalized medicine where you might be using it differently in every patient, of course, that adds, up, adds to, to cost. But the fundamental technology is actually not expensive. Well, I think the key takeaways are the following. I think, first of all, uh, this is a technology that grew out of fundamental academic research, curiosity-driven science, that underscores the importance of public support of that kind of research. Secondly, I would say that this is a technology that is widely available. It's a very exciting time that uh, scientists have access to a tool like this that allows interrogation of genomes, but also increasingly actual in, uh, interference with the genome in ways that I think will be very positive in, in medicine going forward. But then third, I would say that that comes along with very important ethical questions and challenges that need to be addressed up front. Mm -hmm.